Mammalian meat allergy could sound made up, and only a few decades ago, it would have been. The story of how we figured out what it is, is the topic of this video. Defining a new disease starts by noting a common phenomenon. Patients were showing up with typical GI symptoms of nausea and vomiting, but on top of that, they were having rash and hives and a sense of shortness of breath. Symptoms that suggested anaphylaxis mediated by an IgE reaction. Determining the trigger of the reaction was a real challenge. We would eventually learn that it had an unusual delay in the presentation of symptoms. Think about a peanut allergy. It doesn't take long before the accidental ingestion of peanuts before a patient is gasping for breath. In contrast, a mammalian meat allergy can take hours before symptoms finally present. So a steak dinner earlier in the night might awaken a patient in the middle of the night feeling flush and vomiting. Symptoms that sound like they maybe had food poisoning would follow a more typical course of the meal, a delay, and then symptoms. This was not the usual pattern for an IgE reaction, which is also termed an immediate hypersensitivity reaction, which underscores the typical presentation of cause and quick effect. That delay in symptoms also meant that there was a long list of potential culprits because it could have been your lunch or your dinner, and there are so many different foods that you eat and ingredients within those foods that it was difficult to determine the exact cause. With time, enough patients, and careful review, a pattern emerged that patients were developing symptoms typically after eating beef and pork, although in some areas, kangaroo. Separately, it was noted that a small number of patients who were being treated with cetuximab for their colon cancer were developing similar reactions. The scientists who had made the drug were able to deduce that it was alpha-gal, a complicated carbohydrate, that resided within the drug because of the animals that it was originally derived from. Alpha-gal is a complex carbohydrate, complex enough to trigger an immune reaction, and it's present on non-primate mammals, which means you and I don't express it on our own cells, making it foreign. That also means that things like poultry and fish don't have alpha-gal, and they will not trigger this reaction. Hence, the mammalian meat allergy. But why were people developing a reaction to alpha-gal? Well, it was noticed that it was disproportionately occurring in patients who had been exposed to ticks, whether that was because they were traipsing through the northern forests of Europe, hiking the Appalachians, or going on a walkabout in the outback. They were exposed to ticks, and ticks typically feed off of non-primate mammals, animals that lack a thumb to pluck them off if they're noted. With your thumb, you're a less desirable host for a tick because if discovered, you can just pull it off. But should you gallivant through a forest and one lands on you, it will happily feed on you. And when it does, it's gonna inject some of its saliva, which contains proteins that anesthetize from its bite and anticoagulate your blood so the good times roll. Within that saliva are byproducts of its last meal, which include alpha-gal, which is unlike anything that your immune system has ever seen before. So it takes interest in it, and the next time that you were to eat mammal meat, your immune system will now react to that. So in other words, mammalian meat allergy is caused by tick backwash. <laughs> Alpha-gal is very interesting because it's one of the rare allergies to a carbohydrate, but it's far from being the only type of meat allergy. You can certainly have an allergy to poultry and fish, and you could also have an allergy to proteins in meat. Alpha-gal is abundant in all cells of these mammals, and so you can have cross-reactivity, not just with muscle meat, but also organ meat, and possibly with dairy too. If you have an allergy to meat that does not follow these typical patterns though, you should consider causes other than alpha-gal. But why is there an atypical delay in the onset of symptoms? It's not that a rule is being broken of these immediate hypersensitivity reactions. Rather, it is a characteristic of how the GI tract absorbs the alpha-gal carbohydrate. It seems that it has to bind with lipids to finally be absorbed, a process that takes time, more time than it takes for a protein to be absorbed. And this distinguishes the more immediate reaction of a protein-mediated allergy, like a peanut, with the alpha-gal syndrome. Once alpha-gal is finally absorbed, its reaction is just as swift as it is with other IgE-type reactions. Meat allergies are not newly recognized, they're just finally understood at the molecular level. Traditional Afghan medicine treated meat allergies using a plant that we now know 
had an antihistamine-like property. You can use Benadryl for minor reactions, but more major reactions may even require an EpiPen. Desensitization procedures have been described in medical literature, but have only been accomplished for a handful of patients. With time, the allergy may subside over a course of one to five years, but really, for the time being, you're just avoiding beef, pork, and other mammal meats. Thank you for watching, and be safe.